Hello! Let's make another Scratch game! So I made this one ahead of time. Let me just show you how it works. How many points to win? Oh, it, the game started beforehand. Well, that'll be a bug to fix, but this is a four-player game. So that you have two players on the top, two on the bottom, and you're trying to grab something to eat. So we can make these whatever kind of sprites we want. If you can't tell, these are supposed to be dinosaurs. I maybe did not do such a great job drawing those. So in this version, we might make them cats or something. I don't know. So this one is, has quite a few moving parts in it, but we'll get started with a few things at a time. So firstly, what I'm going to do is let's work on the backdrop. We're going to draw just a background color. Uh, I'll do green as like grass. And then we're also going to need a specific outline color. So I'm going to use red. We're going to use this because Scratch has the ability to um, detect like when a sprite is touching a color. So we're going to use the red color in the background as kind of like the, the perimeter, wherever the um, character can go to get past the dinosaurs or cats or whatever. So let me just try to adjust this. And does that look okay as the backdrop? This is just our um, game background. So I'm going to give it a name because we're going to have several of these. But if you see over here, you see the little red perimeter. Basically when the, the thing that we're trying to catch hits a red area, it's going to just go away. It's like you, you, didn't, you missed it. Kind of like if you were playing Pong and it went off the side of the screen. I'm going to make a few more backdrops, so we're just going to duplicate this. Um, we're going to have a different player wins, so red player wins, and mm, I don't know, it's a green player wins, and we'll just do one for each of these. Um, you can choose whatever colors you want, and a purple player wins. So for these, I'm going to repaint the backgrounds. We're going to make this like a maybe a light red for red player wins. Maybe light green for green player wins. Light pink for pink player wins. And so on. We're just doing a bunch of decorating first. So let's make this purple. Okay, and I'm going to write in here. You can use the text tool or you can use a brush. Let's get a black color and say uh, red player wins. So maybe that's not very stylish. If you want to make it look a little bit cleaner, it might be better to just use the text tool. So we could say red player wins. And you can adjust the fonts over here. And you can adjust the size this way. So we'll do that for each of these. Red player wins, green, no, oh no, I want it bigger than that. Player wins, we'll make this bigger. Oh, I like to have consistency, so I'm gonna make these all the same. And then over here, pink player wins. So we have different screens for what happens, and we can even have like a, um, a title screen. So let's do that as well. So we're just kind of setting up all the game assets we need. So let's add one more. This is going to be title screen. And I can click and drag it to the top just so it's kind of the first up there. And I don't know, what's a good background color for a game screen? Maybe blue. And we'll just do a blue rectangle. And I don't know what to call this. I'm going to use cats this time instead of dinosaurs. And cats collecting mice or something from a mouse hole? Or a chicken coop, maybe? I don't know. Collecting chickens. Um, so whatever, we'll just do... I don't know. I'm not good at titles. Let's say cat... Cats are mean. 
Oh no, it cop it filled that in. That's weird. <laughs> Cats are we'll just spell it incorrectly. Mean. Very stylish. Um, I probably can't film all of these in. We'll see. Cats are mean. Mean. Oh no. Mean. Okay. And we can use the eraser to fix. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> okay. Do they have a dropper tool? I don't see a dropper tool. Well, that's going to be our text. You just have to deal with it looking not so great. Let's maybe round that out a little bit more. Cats are mean. Okay, good. Perfect. Um, so back here, we see this is the title screen, but let's maybe start with just working on the game. So I'm going into the backdrop painting area and going to game background, and we can get started. So we will need a like place that our collectibles come out of? What should our collectibles be? Are we just gonna be doing a chicken coop? Maybe I'll, that seems somewhat easy to draw. I'll draw... Um, here's a, a house. It's a chicken coop. I don't know what a chicken coop looks like actually. Here we go, but it's a tiny house for chickens. We will fill this red because I feel like that's what chicken coop colors are supposed to be. And brown. So this is our chicken coop. Okay. And we'll just name it chicken coop over here as well. And I'll put that in the middle at zero, zero. And maybe that's a little bit too big. Let's make it 50% size. Okay. And then let's draw another sprite. Oops. Going to paint. Let's do, this is going to be our cat or a type of cat. We'll do different colors. So black outlines and try to draw, let's see. So um, also the direction by default is facing this way. So we need it to face this way. So let me try to make a good cat face. That's a very, that's a very big cat face. Let's do zoom in a little bit and try to do a smaller cat face. Okay, well we can resize it. It's fine. So that's like the front of the face. We'll have like cat eyes. I don't know how to draw. It's okay. Uh, close. That, that kind of works, right? And then we'll put a cute nose here. And then these are angry cats, because cats are mean. Oh, that looks a little lopsided. Okay, well, close enough. And we'll put some paws over here. It's trying to attack the mice. Just fat little paws, because all cats are beautiful. Okay. Let's just name this cat. I'm gonna fill this in. We had, um, what, like a red player and a pink player and stuff like that. So I'll fill that. We'll just fill in like a darker nose color and yellow eyes. Boop, boop. Okay, so that's one player. Maybe should be half that size. So we're gonna put players around on this side, on the left, on the right, on the top and the bottom. So we're gonna name this guy um, left red player, and we can make a duplicate, um, but we'll worry about that a little bit later. So there's the cat. All right, so we're starting the game. Let's do, let, mm, I don't want to have to go back and change too much code afterwards, so let's uh, ignore the title screen. I'm trying to think. What would be a good approach for this? Because if we want to have a title screen, we have to do some setup and then change here. 
but if we don't have a title screen, then we don't have to do that change. Okay, you know what? We're going to do this the right way. We're going to have a title screen. So again, we have different code. The backdrop has its own code. The cat has its code and the chicken coop has code. So each of these will do something different when the green flag is clicked. So this is when the game starts. So that's when the, like, the, the play button is hit. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to delete this block and copy it from over here so I keep the comment. Or, nope, it didn't keep the comment. Okay, whatever. Game starts. And over here, game starts. I like having comments. So on the menu screen, we don't want these guys showing up. So I'm going to just say under looks, we're going to hide all of that. Same for the cat. So when you hit the play button, just the title screen. Um, from here, when the game starts, let's ask the user how many points to go until, except that the backdrop itself can't ask us that question. I don't think. Can it? Oh, no, it can. Good. Okay. So we'll say uh, play until how many points. Okay. So that's going to, when we hit that, it'll ask play until how many points. And then whatever the user answers goes in this answer blob, this answer variable. So then, I'm going to delete that. We're going to make a variable for play until this many points. We're going to set that to whatever the player answered. And then we're going to do a broadcast to say we're starting the game. Start game. Okay. So that's going to be an event. When the game starts, we need to move it to the next screen. So under looks, we have switch backdrop can't really see what this is saying. That says and wait, we don't want wait. Switch to game background and then if everybody else can get set up. So this is set up. So if I hit play, how many points? 10 and then it goes to the game screen. So these guys will also need to do something once the game starts. So when I receive the message to start the game we are going to show up. Same for the player. When I get the... where is it? When I receive start game, we are going to show. So again, here... oh, I forgot one thing. We still need this one here, the backdrop code. When the flag is clicked, we do want this to show the title screen. So we have to switch the backdrop to title screen. So play, cats are mean, how many points? 10, okay. Then it goes to the game. So that's how we've changed the game screen. And we'll do a similar thing whenever we get like player one wins or player two wins or something like that. So we have play until points. We don't really need that on the screen, so I'm just going to hide that. Let's start with um, implementing the cat movement. So here, we're going to new do a forever loop. Not when the flag starts, because that's going to actually start the title screen. Here we have start game here. So forever, we're going to check for player input. So if the key is pressed, so let's see, what should we make for this guy? Maybe the W and S key to go up and down. I'm going to make this four players, so they're going to need different keys to press. W to go up, and S to go down. So this one's going to be move up, and this is going to be, oops, oops, did not mean to make a duplicate. Delete that, add that, move down. Okay, these will be inside of the forever loop. So while the game is running, I'm just going to add more comments because that's the way I am. The game is running. 
I wish this comment block would kind of resize automatically. We check for up, we check for down. If the player uh, hits W, we need them to go upwards. So remember that the Y coordinate is going to be up and down. The X coordinate is left and right. So for this guy, we are going to change the Y values. So down is going to be negative. We'll change this to negative 10. So that now, well now I have to type in the points every time, but I can hit W and S and it'll go up and down. Okay? We can also do this for the other characters as well. So we have the red player. Um, let me see. Um, we're going to do one more thing. No, no, we can start. Okay. So I'm going to say duplicate. We're going to do the next player. So let's do the right, um, I don't know, green player. So this is going to be over on this side. And we're going to uh, change the sprite. We're going to repaint it. Make him green, green cat. Okay. We want it to be rotated the opposite direction, so we're going to do negative 90. And there's one more thing I forgot to do ahead of time. When the red cat starts, we need to center it on the screen. So when the game starts, we're going to put it at Y is 0 and maybe negative 200. When the green cat starts, we're going to go 0 and positive 200. So both of these will show up when the game starts. Uh, now we don't want W and S for this guy because that will also um, control both of them at the same time. So let's make this one, we're gonna have four total players, so I'm gonna make this one the eight number. So if you look at your numpad, um, eight is up and two is down if you have like a full-size keyboard. So if I run this, now I can do up and down, up and down. So they move independently. All right. Now we have to do the top and bottom. So they'll be a little bit different. We'll change this to the top pink player. So we'll edit this guy's costume. We'll fill it with um, like a light pink. OK. We are going to rotate it. So it's facing downwards, that's 180 degrees. And then this one isn't going to start at that same position. We need it in the x equals 0, that's the center. And then y equals maybe 170? Let's try that. Uh, maybe 160. Nope, maybe 150. I think that might be OK. Let's do 140. OK, that's fine. Um, Actually, this looks a little bit unfair because the horizontal or the players on top and bottom are much closer to the chicken coop <laughs> than these guys. Oh well. <laughs> so next we have um, changing their movement. Since this guy's going to go left and right, it's not going to be the Y coordinates that change, it's the X coordinates. So let's say this is going to be J and L to move. So we're going to do J for left and L for right. Oops. Right is going to be plus 10. Left is going to be negative 10. So let me just add comments here. Move left. And here, move right. Okay, I didn't add comments here, so let's do that here. 8 is move up, and 2 is move down. Okay, so that one's also going to work now. So we go J and L, that goes back and forth. And finally, we'll do the bottom. So we'll have bottom purple cat. So here, excuse me. We have this and do kind of a darker purple. Fill that. This one's going to be facing zero direction or zero degrees for its direction. 
and instead of starting at 140, it'll start at one, negative 140 down there. And uh, the only keys we haven't used now are the arrow keys. So we'll do left and right. So this is move left. This is move right. Okay, so now they all have the ability to move. Unfortunately, I can't, I don't have this many hands to be able to test with, so you'll just have to kind of pretend four people are playing the game. All right, so we have a good start. Next, we have a chicken coop, but we want to have chickens that we catch. So let's make a new sprite. Uh, not choose a sprite. We're going to paint. I'm going to call this chicken and try to draw a chicken. Um, let's see. How does one go about drawing a chicken? I am not totally sure. Um, hmm, I feel like chickens are this shape, maybe. Is that a chicken? Does that look chickeny? And we'll have some wings. That's a little bit messy. And a beak. Or maybe we should do little baby chickens. Like they're catching the tiny baby chickens as they exit the the house. So let's do that's not a very good circle, but you know, it'll have to do. Here's baby chicken. And then some feet. And beak. And let me zoom in a little bit and we'll add some eyes. Okay, and fill. Yellow. Such a cute baby chicken. It would be a shame if anything happened to it. Okay. So there we go. It needs to be smaller than that, so let's try 50. Yep. So we're going to have to also do this flag thing when the game starts. Chicken should be hidden. And when the game starts, chicken should show. Um, actually, when the game starts, maybe we shouldn't show the chicken because we don't want it to appear right away. So it'll be hidden. Boop. And we don't have anything when we start the game. No chickens are on the screen at first. Okay, so what we want to happen is every so often a chicken should leave this chicken coop. So here we're going to have kind of like a every second or every couple seconds it's going to create a new chicken. So under control we want a forever loop while the game is running. Okay. Okay, and then in uh, here we'll say like maybe wait two seconds and then every two seconds we're going to create a clone of a chicken. Boop. So what that's going to do is actually create a chicken on the screen. We can't see it right now because it's still invisible, but we can come here and then there's an option for when I start as a clone. So anytime a new chicken comes into existence we will need to show it. So let me see. Oop. Well, okay. Let's see just to make sure it works. I think it'll just, yeah, show up right there. So you won't be able to see the chickens. It's just making a bunch of chickens. We need to start them off at the same place as the, um, the coop, and then they'll move from there. So go to the chicken coop. And then from there, you're going to move in some random direction. So, let's see. And then this will create a new chicken every couple seconds. So once the game, or once the chicken is created, it will also have a forever loop. And it is just going to move. We can have it move in a straight direction. Um, we can rotate it. We can have it move randomly. So, for example, let's say... Um, go to random position and uh, so that way the chickens will just kind of wander about. Oh no, that is not quite what I meant. <laughs> I meant glide to random position. Oh, maybe not five seconds, that's a long time. 
Well, see, then the chickens start moving around randomly. Okay. But if the chicken hits the red part of the screen, we want it to be like it, it got away. So let's do a if statement. If we are going to touch, if we're touching the red color, so I can click on this. And then down here is a like dropper tool. You can use this to d detect a color, like this red color. If we're touching red color, then the chicken has escaped. Okay. And at that point, we're going to delete this clone. So once it's off the screen, we just get rid of it. So um, one more thing, anytime we create a new chicken, let's play a sound as well. Let's, does it, does the chicken have sounds? It has a pop. Let's, uh, let's find a sound. Is there any chicken sounds? Yeah, that works. So we are going to play the chicken sound. Chirp. So anytime there's a new chicken, it'll go and start walking around. Oh, that one just booked it. They, they're gone. <laughs> okay. All right, so then the cats will be moving around, and if a cat catches a chicken, then it gets eaten, I guess. Uh, or they become really good friends, and the chicken goes to the cat's house for fun. Um, okay, so let's see. We need to have the chicken detect if it's touching the um, cat, so we're going to have to do some more detection. So. We're going to say if, and we're going to say if we're touching the left player, well, we probably need a left player score. So let's go ahead and go in here. We're going to make a variable. This is going to be um, red left score. Let's make the other ones. We got green right score. We need... Um, which color top is pink? Pink top score and purple bottom score. So we have all these scores. There's not really a good place to put this in the game. It's kind of in the way. But let's just kind of try to figure that out. So if the chick touches the left player, we're going to add one to the left player score and we're going to delete this clone i'm not saying the chicken is dead but you know um so we're gonna also play a sound just so we can tell what happened let's look for another sound um that's that's weird uh nope could play a cat sound. Ooh, that sounded like someone barfing. Um, maybe maybe that sound. We'll play the chomp sound. Okay, so this is for one of the players. Um, we'll put this in here. Add a comment. Left player gets chicken. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this because we're going to need this for all four players. So touching the green player, um, right player gets chicken. So instead we increment the right score, duplicate again. This is going to be the top player gets chicken. So we get the top score and we have to update this here as well and duplicate. Now make sure that these are side by side. Don't put one if statement inside of the other. Put it like that. This will be the bottom player. So down here. Oops. I am accidentally testing the game. Okay. So that will increment the score and get rid of the chickens. Now, when I currently play the game, it's not going to reset the score every time. So that's another thing we got to do. I'm going to do this in the backdrops. So when the game starts, I'm going to set all of these variables to zero. We're going to set green and pink and purple and 
uh, uh, red. These are all going to set to zero. All right, so let's test this out really quick. We'll play uh, five points. I'm going to just control these two. So did that work? Ah, ah, there, I got one. See? And then uh, we're currently there's no game over screen. It's supposed to end once we hit five points, but it doesn't do anything. But yeah, so the game, the main gameplay here works. All right. So now we need to detect when the game is won. So remember when we first created the game, it asked how many points. We set it to play until points, and now we have to see when when somebody hits all of the points. So we're going to have to do a forever loop, and I'm here in the backdrop still. Started the game. This is the game loop. And we'll check for winner. Okay. If, and we're going to do operators. If, um, let's see, we got our variables. If the green score is equal to play until points, then they have one. So then now we go into the looks, change the backdrop to green player wins. Uh, we could play some music or sound. So let me look for something real quick. Sounds, what do we got? Let's find some happy sound, which might take a second. Do they have a win? Yeah, that, that works. We'll play the win sound. And we'll also want to stop the game, so we weren't going to do that quite yet, but I have one more thing. We are going to also broadcast another message and say, game over. So the game has ended, we're going to stop everything. Okay, so this is if the green player wins, it's going to be the, oop, that's not where I want, it's going to be the same for, um, the other players as well, but we need to replace it with pink and pink player wins and duplicate and then we'll change this to purple, purple player wins and again um, red and red player wins and then so that's all of that put together. I'm going to throw it in my forever loop so while the game is running it's going to keep checking to see if there's a winner this is green player wins. This is pink player wins. And purple player wins. So it'll go through here and just check one at a time. If the purple, the green player hasn't won yet, then it'll check the pink, then it'll check the, the purple, then the red. Did I say that in the right order? Green, pink, purple, red. <laughs> Player wins. Okay, so it's going to broadcast a message, game over, and it's going to change the background to look like one of these. Okay, so we also need to make sure to detect when the game ends. So when I receive game over, we're going to hide again because we don't want this stuff on the screen. So I'm going to just take this, put this in little baby chicken, and I put it in all of the players. And there we go. And we can test this out again. So play. Oh, why are those scores still that way? Oh, probably because uh, I have not started the game yet. So we'll play again. I'm currently just going to be purple cat. <laughs> Maybe I should play a sound if the chicken escapes as well, but not not too big of a deal. Yep, yep. Come here. There we go. Purple player wins. Yay! Okay, so that's pretty much the game. Um, we can also clean this up a little bit at the when the game starts. Let's hide these scores. So we're gonna hide the variables. Um. Not the chicken coop. We're in backdrop. 
When the game starts, let's hide the variables because they're kind of in the way. Oops. Ah. If you ever like accidentally put a piece where you don't want it to, um, everything will move based on the top piece, so you kind of have to split it up that way. So we'll put these here. Hide, hide, hide. Switch the background, do the ask. So this needs to be all the different scores. And then once the game starts, we can also show them. So show all the scores. It's just clean user interfaces. I am a sucker for clean user interfaces. <laughs> All right, so we'll try it again. Now it's nice. That I, you know, I could have done a better job on this title screen, but eh, that's fine. Five. Now I can control. Oops! I accidentally hit the find button. That kind of messed up my game. And the characters seem to have gone off the top of the screen and got stuck. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We're good. Everything's fine. And then we just collect chickens to be friends with. It looks like sometimes the collision isn't quite catching, but that that's a that's Scratch's fault, not my fault. So, yeah, if you have four siblings at, or I guess three other siblings at home or got some friends over you can play with, you can compete to catch the most chickens. Now that pink cat just completely didn't catch the chicken for some reason. Hey, come on. Chickens. There we go. Red player wins. And you can kind of clean up the screen and stuff and make it look a little bit nicer. But, you know, that works for now. I am going to just name this cats are mean. And let's add the instructions. So red cat is going to be W and S. The pink cat is J and L. J and L to move left and right. Uh, purple cat, arrow left and right, arrow keys to move left and right. And the last cat, which I forgot. Green cat. Uh, eight and two to move up and down. Use the numpad. Okay. Um, collect the most chickens to win. And we're going to put collect in double quotes. And then I think that's good. So again, you can see inside by clicking on this. Uh, you can get to, I'll put the link to this in the description, and you can also see the other games under my profile here. Oh, that's not a great uh, exa or example picture. I don't know what should it be called. How do I save it from here? Or save now? Does that update it? That looks better. So that's a nicer looking screen. Okay. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, go play the game, look at the source code, and Im keep improving on it, add some more features, let me know what you think. Bye!